You've got to give some warning if you're going to pull out Charlie Dalton from Dead Poets Society. That scene does things to a man. Hey friends, are you sick of looking at my face? I thought so. In that case, I have good news because today I have company. <laughs> this is Dan, he's my dominant. You know those earlier videos when I mentioned my dom in the UK? Yeah, this is him. A few rapid fire facts about Dan. Like the rest of us, he's been a spanking fetishist his whole life. He's a drummer and a cat lover, and he's British and Dutch. The Dutch half of Dan is why I know how to say, alsjeblieft niet mijn billeslan. It's a little treat for those of you who are watching from the Netherlands. Sidebar, at some point, someone is going to need to explain to me why I have so many friends in the Netherlands. Seriously, it's, it's like for a small country, it's a little out of control. Like. 30% of the people on my dating database are Dutch, and I've been profiled in Dutch magazines two times now. I, I, I don't know. Maybe there's something about living below sea level that makes people super pervy. Anyway, hey Holland, hey. <laughs> Today, we are going to play a little game. I reached out on social media to ask people what questions they would like to have uh, both a top and a bottom answer. We're going to write our answers privately, then flip them around and compare notes to see uh, if there are any surprises. We've both seen the questions in advance, but we haven't compared notes, so I don't know how he's going to answer. What do you think, Dan? Will any of my answers surprise you? Probably. <laughs> All right, so let's play. Question one is from one of my Patreon supporters. It is... Is it better to target the butt or should thighs get some attention? Mm. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Butts are perfect, right? Any, any time spent hitting something that isn't a butt is wasted energy. Well, it's good to see we are compatible because I wrote, hell no, we won't go. <laughs> Thigh stuff is... Terrible. <laughs> yeah, I feel like your reasoning is different. I feel like your reason for choosing is different. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't mind that it hurts. It's just bottoms are perfectly designed for being smacked, and yeah, it's wasted energy. Thigh stuff isn't a hard limit for me, but I don't love it. Um, I think this is another one from one of your Patreon supporters. Yeah. Favorite word for butt. Favorite word for butt. Yep. Yeah, that's a good question, and I'm gonna add. Let's put favorite and least favorite word for butt. Yep, okay. Yep. Okay, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. One, two, three. <laughs> yep. You know, bottom is good. Ass sounds too sexual. Uh, nobody, yeah, no, nobody, no, no, no Bottom ass. is cute. No ass. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next. Good work, team. <laughs> Question three is, Another one from one of my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys. Oh, I love this question. It's really okay. good. Do either of you get performance anxiety at parties or even just alone? Okay. Right, you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Wait, you know, not anymore. You know, um, we've been doing it a while, this a while now. Like sure, like five years ago or something, but not anymore. Yeah, um, it's amazing how quickly going to parties starts to feel yeah. totally normal. So I think we'd both say that um, when we first started going to party, like for the first hour, um, yeah, playing felt a little awkward. And I for certainly felt a little self-imposed pressure to, um, you know, play a lot or, or play in a really impressive style or something. But that went away almost immediately. People are so friendly that you can just relax and be yourself. But the reason I wrote this, post-traumatic stress, is that the performance anxiety that I feel at parties is now as a host. Every time I host a party, whether it's a spanking party or a totally vanilla like board game night, um, I, you know, <laughs> I'm one of those people who freaks out and is like, do you think people had fun? Did people enjoy my party? Like I get, you know, I get host-traumatic stress. So if you've ever come to one of my parties, please do me a solid and text me after and be like, oh my God, the party was so fun because uh, there's a 100% chance that I'm sitting at home waiting for reassurance exactly like that. Best party ever. <laughs> Question yes. four. 
All right. All right. It, uh, it's again one from your, one of your Patreon supporters. Yeah. If you could tell young Spanko you one thing, what would it be? If you could tell young Spanko you one thing. I'm excited to see your answer for this one. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Spanko girls exist and they're awesome. Um, I wrote what you what you Come here. out yourself sooner. Wow. Uh, and I outed myself pretty soon, pretty soon, as you guys know. I outed myself in the New York Times when I was 26, uh, so that's pretty young. Um, but unfortunately, by the time I outed myself publicly, and even to myself, like right, it, it takes a long time to sometimes acknowledge our desires to ourselves, let alone to other people. Um, I was already six years into a relationship with someone who, as it turns out, could not... Uh, love someone with my sexual identity. Um, and so I wish that I had come out um, to other people, but even more importantly to myself uh, years sooner because I think I might have been able to avoid myself a lot of heartbreak. I, I think that um, I'm, I'm glad that it, it, it took me a while and I came out a few years older than, than you were. Um, but that's okay. I, having had time to think about it, I felt I was more ready then for a dynamic and relationship. So I don't regret that I was a little bit older than you when I came out. I feel good about it. Okay, the next one is <laughs> another question from a Patreon supporter. You have a lot. Um, the question is, what is your favorite, most delicious Spanko trigger word or phrase? Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> if, if I had a catchphrase, that'd be it. It would be, watch it, young lady. Yeah. Um, this question was kind of hard for me to answer because I feel like that's such a moving target, right? Mm -hmm. Like one week, maybe I'm really responding to one word and the next week, maybe it's a different yeah. phrase. Um, but lately, the phrase need to be has been appearing a lot in my fantasies, like in the context of need to be punished or need to mm -hmm. be spanked. Yeah. So... I guess this is one for now. Right, uh, next one. Okay, um, what is your hard limit? Mm. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> I don't like people breaking your skin. Yeah. I don't, I don't I, it's, it's, you know, obviously we play with people at parties and stuff. Um, you don't even really like bruises. No, but bruises is okay. Yeah, I like red. I like bruises. Red, you know, redness is my ideal, but no, the main thing is bruises. I mean, I just don't like people breaking your skin. That's my limit. <laughs> this I, is true. I wrote, dicks kill headspace. They do. You keep your dicks Jump. in your sex-oriented port. <laughs> I, don't, so I, I don't want any... No. Also, I could have also written boobs kill headspace. Just boobs kill headspace just, too. Uh, just all unnecessary appendages that aren't spanking related. It's just bottoms. Just, just, bottoms. Just bottoms. <laughs> what is the best spanking position? Uh, <laughs> I feel like everyone who is watching this video is screaming the same thing we are both about to write down, but I shouldn't take we have it to answer it anyway. One, two, three. OTK. <laughs> Uh, if you guys haven't seen my Spanking 201 video, um, which defines some acronyms in the spanking community, OTK, of course, stands for over the knee. It's the one. Best startle. Mm. Best startle. Interesting. So again, for those of you who haven't seen um, my last video where I defined some of these terms, um, a startle is any unexpected scene or reference in a movie or TV show or book. One, two, three. Ah! It only, do you know, it's a little sexual, but it's over the knee and it's bare bottom. And that's, that's why. It's no. still... You're right, it's a good one. It, it, I, I was definitely startled. All right, so as those of you who have read my trash pamphlet know, I have a special place in my heart for male-male spanking scenes. And yeah, there, there's a, a school paddling in Dead Poets Society that I grew up on that scene. <laughs> Assume the position. 
one. Okay. Question number, who knows? Favorite play partner other than each other. Hmm. Ready? <laughs> yeah, one, two, three. I couldn't pick one. There are two girls we know, two really good friends. Both of their names begin with K. They're both awesome. Uh, and I put, of course, my good friend who I've mentioned several times on this channel, Princess Kelly May. Um, I think she's one of my favorite play partners, not only because she's an amazing spanker, um, but because she's an amazing friend and an amazing person. And what makes this thing we do so special is the intimacy and the connection we share with other people. Uh, and so playing with Kelly is special because she is such a good friend. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> Okay, my turn to pick. Um, All right, let's hear it. What is your favorite implement? Easy, easy. Okay, one, two, three. Hairbrush. Have you written? So, <laughs> I wrote reptile brain says hairbrush, and what I mean by that is reptile brain is what I call that, you know that part of your brain that um, is like kind of your enemy? In a spanking context, reptile brain is the part that like craves something you hate. So I hate hairbrushes. They are definitely not my favorite implement in just a normal way. Um, that would be something much more comfortable like belts or straps. Um, hairbrushes hurt, but that, that reptile brain just craves it sometimes. Okay, next question. How have your tastes changed over time. Okay, one, two, three. Um, over time I've discovered that I, I prefer more of a daddy sort of, sort of role rather than just being a straight disciplinarian. I quite like to... You, know, you like I'm the a, caregiver? Yeah, I'm very caring. I like to, Rather than just being disciplinarian, I like to have more an active caring role in a mm. dynamic. I think I'd say I play way less hard than mm. I used to. And I think it's because I'm really satisfied. Um, there was a time in my life when I wasn't satisfied. I was really thirsty and desperate. But yeah, as I've become psychologically more satisfied, um, I find that I just don't need this really brutal, intense kind of physical play anymore. So, Yeah, makes sense. Next, who are the best spankers, Americans or Brits? <laughs> I like this question. I forgot that that one was in there. Hmm. I do perceive here a divided duty. Gotta be patriotic. My right? duty to my country <laughs> versus my affection for your accent. Okay. Are you ready? One, two, three. Natural scolders. We are natural born scolders. British people are always scolding each other. It's in our nature. It's true. Brits are natural scolders. And we're naturally bratty. We're just throwing, exactly. throwing y'all's So this whole dynamic is just... Into the harbor. Just makes sense. Just put a tea bag right in yeah, the you just, toilet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't tea bag like a sex? I mean, I wouldn't we know. wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. No. Um, I wrote American implements, British accents. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, I've that. got uh, I've got a soft spot in my heart for typically American implements like paddles. Yes, yeah, so do I. I'm not so turned on by typically British implements like canes. Uh, I think we had been together for like what more than two years before you came to me for the first yeah, time. Yeah, I love paddles. They're way better than canes. Yeah. Um, but then I wrote British accents because everyone knows American ladies have a thing for British accents. Favorite spanking author. Mm. Favorite spanking author. Okay, so to um, explain this, by favorite spanking author, what we think the question means is like fanfic writer or story writer, um, erotica writer. Okay. Is that what so there's this a... Don't write me <laughs> for favorite I was, I was just going to do an arrow and just like point it at her. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't mean no. like okay, all right. books about spanking. We mean like um, erotica, fanfic, stories, things okay. like that. all right. It is her though. Okay. One, two, three. Have ah. <laughs> you written? <laughs> Amazing. All right, do you want to talk about Daria? Um, yeah, she hasn't been writing for ages. On the spanking library, I think she has 100, 134 stories. I've definitely read all of them. 
at least 133 of them are awesome. Have you ever corresponded with Daria? No, she's been, she's she's not, I think for at least 15 years now, she's not been on the internet or writing. or She hasn't written anything new for ages. I don't think she's on the internet. She's MIA. But her stories, they get me. Hmm. Uh, I wrote Padawan Hadra. <laughs> um, as anyone who has read my trash pamphlet knows, um, I have like a weirdly strong affinity for spanking fan fiction that involves the characters Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi from <laughs> Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Uh, I think I saw it when I was like 13 and there was enough like scolding and disciplinary tension between the two of them that it triggered my reptile brain and off to the races she went. So years later I discovered a website called Padawan Punishments which uh, was like an archive of Star Wars themed spanking stories. And one of the writers was someone who went by the alias Padawan Hadra and her stories were just fantastic. Um, I am heartbroken to say that Padawan Punishments is no longer on the internet. So unfortunately you guys can't find these stories, but hey, if there is any chance that Padawan Hadra somehow sees this video, please, Please email me. I want to fangirl all over you. <laughs> what movie or TV show should have a spanking scene but doesn't? Mm. One, two, three. Uh. <laughs> Wait, it, the, it, the cartoon? Yes, it would have been the best Disney animation. She even gets sent to her room. And Does so she? She gets sent to her room and locked in her room and they just, they missed a trick. It would have been the best. Well, you remember there's a spanking in Pinocchio, right? Yeah, it's... I mean, it's a clock. It's a clock. <laughs> it's a clock. I remember well. It's a clock near the beginning. Maybe but we can edit it in right here. Not the, the clock, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying. It was just... A, why is there not a spanking in Cinderella? I have no that idea. That is how I feel about... <laughs> So embarrassing. <laughs> this is how I feel about The Phantom Menace. There is that one scene when Liam Neeson and Ewan McGregor are like having a fight and uh, Ewan McGregor says, it's not disrespect, master, it's the truth. It's not disrespect, master, it's the truth. Is there anything more ds -y than that? I mean, this is what the prequels needed, right? That's why, you know, that was, that's all they needed. Yeah, prequels. less Jar Jar Binks, yeah. more hardcore male male BDSM. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Who's okay, different? we're getting close to the end. Almost there. Ah, what do you wish people understood about your dynamic? Okay, yeah. one, two, three. It's, it's hard work. It's, yeah. so, it's really hard work. Yeah, I wrote, sucks for him. Yeah, and being, being a Dom is, I think, you know, people have this idea of it, that it's all just really fun and you can just tell a girl what to do. and. It, the reality is it's really hard work. You have to be really attentive. Like you have to, like there's a lot of responsibility. Like it's, it's yeah. hard work. I mean, he, like sometimes people say to me, isn't your relationship so unbalanced? And I'm like, yeah, it's really unbalanced for him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next up we have, are you a feminist? Uh, one, two, three. Yes. Yes. Of course. Um, I, I worry about people um, not understanding our dynamic, but obviously I believe that women have the right to consent to the kind of relationships they want and the kind of dynamics that they want. Yeah. But, you know, I worry. I think a lot of tops worry about people misunderstanding, you know, what they do. Mm. Here we go. What is the meanest implement? Oh, easy. The meanest. Easy. This won't take long. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah, it's Miss Rose. It's a lady, uh, an American woman who makes like paddles and they are absolutely beautiful, but she makes them out of wood and dragon's breath or something. They are so yeah. mean. She's an artisan who sells spanking implements on Etsy. I'll include a link in the description of this video. But like he said, there is just something about her paddles that turns them into the meanest, but most beautiful um, paddles I've ever seen. And last but not least. Final question. Oh, it's a good one. Best cat. Best cat. One, two, three. <laughs> I love all my babies equally, but it's Daisy. He is correct. It is Daisy. No flaws. Hey, thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope you thought this was fun and uh, 
How would you answer these questions? Tell me in the comments section. Bye.